Yes, indeed. Big Brother Bear here to give you all that you want and what you need. Today, we're going to get into 10 traits for upcoming Division I athletes. Now, if you've been rocking with me on this channel, you know that I'm not real big on Division I. I'm really big on finding a fit for you. Whether that's D1, D2, D3, junior college, NAIA, it doesn't make a difference. I went junior college, then I went to a Division II school. But I will say this. I wanted to go Division I. Let's, let's be clear. Let's not act like I had this maturity when I was coming out of high school. Out of high school, I wanted to go to University of Kentucky, period. Tubby Smith was there. That's where I wanted to go. But as I got older, I realized that I got a full ride scholarship at a junior college, then got a full ride scholarship at Division II school, and you enjoyed every minute of it. I have no, there's no, there's not a day I wake up in the morning like, man, I wish I could have went to Division I. That's never happened to me. It's never, and it's never going to happen to me because I'm so fortunate to be able to have the opportunities I had at a Division II school. I encourage you to do the same. Maybe it's not Division II. Maybe it is Division I. Whatever that is, that's cool. Just Find a fit for you. Don't be gassed up to thinking that if it's if, if you don't play Division One, then you're a failure. If, it, if you don't play Division One, then it's it's not noteworthy. Don't don't think like that. Now, if you don't know, before I get into it, I put out information every week, helping student athletes both in the classroom and out, both in high school and in college. So I'm sure you can find something here for you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. So the first thing I'll say is this: the first trait you need to have. To up your eyes to being a Division I athlete, whether you're coming from junior college and going to the D Division I school or whether you're from high school going to Division I school, is be decisive. This is probably the biggest thing that, 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 that messed me up in high school is I overthought things. I had coaches, literally, every coach that I played for always told me this thing. It's like they got in the corner and they talked about this beforehand, even though they were in different states. They always said, Bill, it looks like you're thinking out there. It looks like, like go hoop, man. It's not what you solving calculus problem, set, problem sets. Go hoop. Just like you be out there when you, when you were at open run, just like when you be playing pickup, play like that. Um, and I know how easy it is to say that and then actually do that, but you got to stop thinking. Don't think when you go out there. Hoop, react, play. That's, 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 that's what you're going out there and play basketball, all right? You're not doing problem sets. Go out there and play basketball. And the reason that I had a hard time just playing, just hooping, and, and, and not always trying to solve doggone quadrat, like the reason I was doing that is because I didn't play against enough quality competition that I risked embarrassing myself. Catch that. Risk embarrassing myself. I played a lot. But the thing about it is when you start playing in church leagues, when you start playing in YMCA and boys and girls clubs, when you know that you're the best person there, and I say, not say you're always the best person, best person at those particular areas, but I'm saying when you are and you continue to play, what ends up happening is you start developing bad habits. And... What ends up happening is you get used to playing in a calm state. You get used to playing in a state where, like, there's no risk of being embarrassed because you're the very best person out there, right? You need to be playing against individuals that you know at the end of the day, if I'm slipping, I'm going to get dunked on, right? If I'm slipping, I'm going to get ripped. If I'm slipping, I'm going, like, I'm going to get pressed. I'm going to get embarrassed. Once you get to that point, once you, once you get to the once you get to the actual bright lights in the game time, it's not that it's daunting because you know how to handle, you know how to channel those emotions. Now you're not nervous, you're just anticipating. Now you're not, you're not scared, now you're just anxious to go ahead and get started. It's a whole different mindset, but you don't get that mindset if you're out there just playing against some scrubs. Not to call anybody names, but people that don't take the game as seriously as you do. Number two, another trait that you need to adopt if you don't already have it already is being coachable. Now listen, coaches have different coaching styles to help your to help your chance of being successful and going division one. And a trait that you need to adopt is being able to adapt to whatever coaching style you have uh, in front of you. Now, I understand some people have certain coaching styles they do the best under. Right? My dad was a strict disciplinarian, served in the military. I can, you can be this close, you can be this close in my face, spitting and cussing, and I'm fine with that, okay? Some people will crumble. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. That doesn't mean you're weak. That just means that that's just how you get down, right? But you need to understand that the more that you can broaden that range of how people can speak to you and, 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 and coach you, the better. Now, granted, no one should be demeaning you, putting their hands on you, spitting in your face or anything like that. But at the same time, you need to make sure that you're just not... You're just not geared to just one style of coaching. And if you are, then make sure that those are the people that you want to be recruited by. Those are the people that you want to get attention of. But what I'm saying is being coachable, being able to take criticism 
is a huge deal. If you're not, if you're always in your feelings, if you're always um, de deflecting responsibility when a coach is trying to, 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 to trying to correct you, when you're always trying to blame someone else, when you're always you got an excuse uh, of, of why you missed the assignment. That's not a trait of a Division, division One athlete. P to be honest, that's not a trait of a student athlete. Period. Number three, you need to be able to rise to the occasion. There's going to be opportunities that you're going to play against some people that are better than you, that are ranked higher than you, that everybody's talking about, that is the crowd favorite. How do you handle those situations? Division one athletes show up and show out. How do you handle those situations? Do you rise to occasion? And do you rise above the, uh, the occasion? Because we know we're going to play against some people that are not as good as us. So in those times, it's easy to develop bad habits. It's easy to go with the flow. It's easy to, eat, to blend in. I've done that. You blend in. Once you surround yourself with some low achieving people, if you're not careful, you'll start blending in. And no one can tell who's the real one, who's not. So do you rise to the occasion and do you rise above the occasion when the time permits? So here's one. When you make a mistake, um, when you mess up, uh, when you get dunked on, uh, when you fail a class, get a D in a class, when you're academically ineligible, uh, when things go not according to plan. Mike Tyson says, when you get hit in the mouth, everybody wants to be, everybody wants to be a champion until they get hit in the mouth, right? So my, my question to you, how quickly can you make the adjustment? When you're in the basketball game, how quickly, does it, does it, how quickly can you transition from getting dunked on, getting the ball out the net, going up the court, scoring the basket? Or going up the court, put somebody else in a position to score a basket. Or going up the court and making the next productive play. How quickly can you do that? How quickly can you adjust when you want to be uh, a doctor, when you want to be a lawyer, when you want to be an engineer? You get in that first class, freshman year, and you fail the class. Or you get that first F. Or, you know, you wake up late. Like, how quickly can you make that adjustment and say, um... What's the, next, what's the next productive thing I need to do to maximize my chance of being successful? It happens both ways, right? Coaches, you're, you're in situations with coaches where they, call, they draw up a play. It's not something you rehearse. It's not something y'all practice. But how quickly can you look at something, make the adjustment in your mind, and go ahead and, and, and see that task through? It's a huge thing. Five, I, I shouldn't have to say this, but you already know this anyway, and that's grace. It is, the, it is the foundation of anything, any type of success as far as being a student athlete. Grace. It's nobody's job but yours to get those grades. It's nobody's job but yours to know what you need in order to graduate. Nobody's job. It's easy to blame it on your academic advisor. It's easy to blame it on your coach. It's easy to blame it on the piss poor teachers you may have had in high school or middle school that gave you a rough start. It's e I get that. But at the end of the day, it's your, it's, it's, it's your job. So if that means... Um, studying more, figuring out how to study. See, we don't give enough credit to that. I'm a person that didn't read my real first book book, like real book with some size until hmm, my junior year in college. Not something I'm proud of, but that's just, that's my story. Be better than me. Don't be like me. So with that said, it took me so much longer to go over the material in college and grasp the material because I didn't have a healthy diet of actually reading books at an early age. So I had to gear my studying towards that. What, what works best for me? It doesn't work best for me just to, to read the chapter. It doesn't, I, need to, I need to make sure that I write things down. I need to make sure I, I develop some flashcards. I need to make sure that I develop uh, a dialogue with someone, just conversation as far as, the comp, as, far as uh, what we went over, right? I, I, need, I need to come up with a rap song. about. I need to come up with something, but just me reading it over and over again, that does not work for me. It's going to take me so much time trying to grasp this information because I didn't have a diet of reading when I was a kid. So what is that for you? Maybe reading is a strong suit for you. Maybe that works for you. If it does, then that's cool. But if it doesn't, make that adjustment. If it doesn't, figure out what that looks like for you. But grace is huge. There are tons of people. I say this loosely, but there's a tons of people that are on Division I rosters that had the grade, so that put them in a position to be there, but not necessarily the skill set. Not necessarily their talent. There lies another point. How important is it for you to go to Division One and just have a letter as opposed to actually playing? Because there's some there's some 4.0 GPAs that, that, that sit the bench the entire time. If, if that's you, if you just want to be associated with Division One, knock yourself out. Take care of your grades. You'll have a higher chance of doing that. But if you actually want to play as well, you need to do both. You need to make sure you're educated on what you need to do as far as 
uh, uh, ACT, stand, standardized tests as far as GPAs, as far as if, if that school requires community service or, 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 or volunteer work, any of that kind of stuff, you need to make sure that you're aware of that. But grades is the foundation. you got to have that. Six, and that is you got to be forgetful, okay? you got to have selective amnesia around this mug. You understand? Like, it, how do I say this? Bad things are going to happen, okay, on the basketball court, it's on the football field, on the baseball diamond, on, on the tennis, what, tennis court, whatever it is, things are going, you're going to embarrass yourself, you're going to slip and fall, you're going to get dunked on, you're going to get crossed up, you're going to get ripped, you're going to fall, you, like, these things are going to happen, okay? But what I challenge you to do is to not remember them, to remember the lesson you learned in doing it, correct, correct the behavior, right? We don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again, but... Forget the embarrassment, right? When you see some of the best shooters, whether it be Steph Curry, Reggie Miller, Michael Red, name some more, name some more, name some more. Uh, Reggie Miller, Michael Red, Steph Curry, give me another one, give me another one. Reggie Miller. When you see these individuals, that's Peja Soyakovich. When you see these individuals, sometimes they are fire hot when they come out there, shooting from the parking lot. And then there's other times when they can't hit the broad side of a dog on barn. Even those individuals. What I've realized when watching those individuals is they don't dwell on it. They try to go in there and get a layup in real quick, right? They try to put somebody else in position to score. Uh, but when they get that behind that line, they still feel confident because they haven't dwelled on the last seven shots they've missed. Clay Thompson, the last seven shots they've missed. They don't dwell on that. They say, okay, I missed it. Let me make sure I make the adjustment. And then I go up there and shoot with confidence. Have a short memory and don't dwell on what you messed up on. Don't dwell on that test you didn't do well on. Don't dwell on the time when you got dunked on. Don't dwell on the time, like don't dwell on it. Make the adjustment and then move forward. The time that it takes you that you're over there sulking and crying and whining and complaining and blaming and deflecting, the time that that happens, the, time, the, the, the longer that period is, the longer it's gonna take you to be successful. If you can mess up, correct, Move on, you're ready to go. But if you mess up and it takes you, it's going to take you forever. You, you, that's, that, that's too long. That, that's a game loss. That's a, that, 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 that's a grade that, 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 that turned into you, you, um, you fell in the course. That's, that's retaking. That's too much time. Number seven is I need you to start seeking out competition. Seeking it out. That means if you're in eighth grade, you need to be playing against cats that are in high school. If you're in high school, you need to be finding a way to play against guys that are playing in college. If you're in college and you want to go to the league, you need to be playing against guys that at least play overseas professionally, semi-professionally, professionally, or the best in those areas. You, you should always, always want to be the worst person in the gym. You'll start making adjustments. It'll get you better. And you'll start being able to play under pressurized situations. It won't be a situation where you're, you're, you're playing and it doesn't even excite you. You want something that excites you. You want something that there is consequence for your, for your mess ups. That you have got to focus or you're going to get embarrassed in front of people. Those, those ways are, are the ways you get better. When you're playing against people that are stronger than you. When you're playing against people that you can't finish low below the basket you got to finish above the basket you got to shoot a floater you got to you got to dunk the ball you got to you got to keep the ball tucked in you have to do something to adjust to the defense that you're playing against if you're not doing that then you're wasting your time eight would be seeking criticism from those that are credible not just seeking criticism from anybody and listen everybody got an opinion everybody maybe you should shoot the ball no mama ain't played since jv18 in sixth grade okay Nothing wrong with mom. Every mom will rock for you. They go, they go ride for you. They're going to try to put you in the best position, right? Same thing with dad. You, you, you should make sure you get this amount of rebounds. Like, listen, I know that. Hey, listen, love you. Love you, man. Love you. I do. I do. But if you start taking everybody's opinion on what you should do, you're not going to do it. It's kind of back on the first one. You're not going to be decisive. It's going to be like uh, analysis by paralysis or paralysis by analysis. I don't know which way it goes, but you're just going to be, uh, what, what, what should... Listen, you want to take criticism by someone that's credible. Now, your big brother Bell is credible. <laughs> Forget what you heard. Big brother Bell is credible. But other people as well, like your coaches, credible individuals of, of criticism is good. Not everybody has an opinion. No, everybody doesn't get a turn. Number nine. This is a veteran move here. A lot of people don't, they don't, they don't have value in this until later. But taking care of your body. 
One veteran habit that I've seen people use around the league is setting off time for them to actually work on their flexibility. Every day, they're working on their flexibility that, that helps out with injuries and so on and so forth. So taking care of your body means making sure that you're, you, you work on your flexibility. Make sure you work on that kind of stuff. Taking care of your, taking care of your body means understanding that you cannot continue to throw junk food in, in, in your mouth, right? And also, nursing little injuries that you have. Nursing those injuries when you have time to nurse those injuries. When I was coming up, they always wanted to name different individuals about, oh, he played with the flu, he played with the MCL, ACL, rotator cuff messed up, and that was like badges of honor. <sighs> well, my dad tried to get me to understand that I didn't understand then is um, those individuals are making millions of dollars as well, okay? Um, you don't need to be playing through stuff that can stop you from playing with your kids one day, okay? You in high school, you in middle school, that's not, listen, listen, you're no more tough going through that. Your pain tolerance may not be the point where you can do that, and that's fine. You're not less of a player for doing that. Take care of your body, okay? There are many people that don't get the opportunity to play Division I, don't get the opportunity to play as a student athlete, period, at college level, because they have sustained so many injuries that they did not take care of. There are people that are going through, I mean, look around, tear your ACL is not a big deal like it was 10, 15 years ago. People, back, people, people go through rehab and get through that, but not the individuals who don't take care of their stuff. If you're not taking care of your stuff, you're not going to be able to get through that, okay? So take care of your injuries. Take care of your body. Watch what you're eating. Ten, and my last one is this. A trait to have or, or practice to have, rather, as far as getting in Division One and staying there. You want to seek individuals out that are solid, <laughs> that have good moral ethics, that have good practices, that do things the right way, that are not challenging you to do boneheaded bull crap, that when, you, when you're done hanging around with them, you don't feel dirty, you don't feel like you have to do some things based off peer pressure. These are, these, these are things that you need to make sure you surround, these are people you need to surround yourself with. You wanna surround yourself by people that you, you feel silly doing dumb stuff with, right? Because their level of excellence is like here, and you want to make sure that you get up there as well, right? Because if you're around some so, some people that with low expectations and, and, and low work ethic, it'll start getting on you, okay? And you'll start, you'll start practicing that same thing. So make sure you're around some solid individuals, whether it be morally or whether it be work ethic, and those are things that will help you as far as Division I, um, Division One habits and definitely traits that you want to adopt. So as you know, I put out information every week. I'm being more consistent. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. A lot of y'all in the comments and you're talking back and forth with me. I'm like, hey man, when are you gonna subscribe? And you don't, and you haven't. So I'm calling y'all out. If I see, if I see that y'all haven't subscribed to the channel, I'm calling y'all. Period. Okay. Shout out to Luca. He's been subscribed for several years. Shout out to Dane Ipson. Several years. Um, those are just the ones I can think of right now. I need you to subscribe and need you to get in the comments. So as always, whether it's on the court or off, in the classroom, out, graduate at the top of your class. Hoop Laude.